So then we move on to uh, Cory Booker pops up again, and he talks about... Uh, they, they ask him a question about uh, legislating through Twitter, which is like, what What the fuck are you guys doing? Like, why is this a fucking question? Like, why is this a goddamn question? Like, be- because Harris made such a big deal about, like, banning... Trump's Twitter account in the last debate and embarrassed the shit out of herself because she has nothing. She doesn't have anything. She is another terrible fucking candidate. All of the, her entire record, like she keeps talking about like being for the people. Well, she's not for the people. She puts people in prison. That's what she does. Parents she puts in prison. She laughs when people are in death row. She is not a good candidate. She does not stand for the people. She is lying when she fucking says that. And her record is proof of it. And the only thing that she could say in that last election is, Trump, 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 I can beat Trump. Oh, please, let me beat him. Let me beat him. The Twitter thing, we can ban him from Twitter and I'll beat him. And she fucking embarrassed herself with that shit. And so they asked this question to Booker in, in order to do what? Well, maybe two of the fucking DNC know-nothings can fucking say it so it's a valid response and she looks like she didn't have a huge gaffe. I, it just made no sense. Then they moved on to this whole lock em up thing, right? Uh, there was a game where um, they were shouting lock em up to Trump, some, something like that. It's difficult for me to like follow these pop culture like super anti-Trump things because I'm just like this this isn't real news it's just a bunch of people being assholes to another asshole you know what makes people not be an asshole is if you're an asshole to them like like if you want somebody to not be an asshole to you you should not be an asshole to them like you should be a kinder person to them and maybe they will like realize that they need to treat people with a little bit more kindness so it's tough for me to like follow all that shit and and look I'm not a fan of Trump right like he just he sucks uh the guys the guys it's he's not on my side and I'm not on his he's a liar he's a huckster he's a cheat so they talked to Sanders and they're like do you discourage that kind of behavior um and, he's, and basically he said, look, nobody's above the law. And he's right, nobody is above the law. But look, we need clear evidence about what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, Russiagate was false. It was proved by the Mueller report. Uh, obstruction is not collusion, right? Uh, and we still, you still have to prove that he obstructed justice. That's something that has to be proven uh, that the Mueller report did not prove. And... Um, Russiagate was a hoax. It was it was uh, false, and it was propagated by MSNBC and Rachel Maddow for three fucking years. They pushed a conspiracy theory, claiming something that wasn't real, creating an even more dangerous situation uh, in terms of foreign policy. And uh, and now this Ukraine Gate situation is murky at best. I, you know, I don't really know what the fuck is happening with it. To be honest with you. Um, I, I, again, I have a couple of videos that I have, uh, uh, saved up and need to like sit down and do research on. Um, and it, there, there is a plan for that, but you know, it's murky at best. You need to actually, um, uh, find some real concrete evidence and the smoking guns they come up with are like broken water pistols. And Bernie basically says, look, uh, we need to be able to fight for the American people. We need to, we, we need to look at, we, we can do both things, right? Like a duality can exist where we can, we can investigate, uh, the, what, what is being said about, um, you know, Ukraine and what happened in Ukraine and stuff, but we can also like fight for Medicare for all and so on and so forth. And I think he's right. I think he's right. Uh, Biden came out and said, uh, you know, uh, they asked him if they should investigate Trump after he's out of office. 
Um, and uh, and he was like, well, you know, pardoning pardoning another president is not the role. Uh, par- pardoning a previous president is not the role of the current president. And it's like, uh, yeah, actually, that that is one of the roles of the presidents to grant pardons. Like that is one of the roles of the president. Joe Biden should fucking take the citizenship test. And it, and I actually all of them should, right? I think that should be a requirement. I think you should take the citizenship test um, and uh, and see if you can pass. And if you don't pass, you don't get to run for president. That that would be pretty cool. I bet Joe Biden wouldn't pass. I bet Joe Biden wouldn't pass because that is one of the roles of the fucking president. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's a, yeah, you know, the president doesn't pardon shit. He doesn't, there's never been a, it's not a thing. No, that's one of his roles, dude. Like, it's presidential pardons are, like, a thing. Like, if the president feels strongly about pardoning somebody because you think it's going to help, like, the rule of law or the American people or whatever, or, like, wh- whatever reason they come up with, that is part of their roles. They are They are legally allowed to fucking do that shit. But he talks about civility, right? He's like, Joe Biden starts talking about civility. And I was like, this is so fucking weird that it's coming from Joe Biden of all people. Like, first of all, Joe Biden is uh, guilty of doing the same thing Trump is. That's the reality. He's guilty of doing the same thing Trump is, right? The reason why he's talking about civility is it's not civility for Trump because he's talked about fucking beating the shit out of Trump. And it's not for, you know, uh, the quote-unquote oppressed class of people. It's not for them. It's for Joe. Joe Biden wants civility for Joe Biden. He knows that he's fucked up, and he hasn't really apologized for his past mistakes, and he doesn't plan on changing any of the actions or behaviors, that he, any of the legislati- legislative actions that he has taken in the past moving forward. So he just wants people to be civil towards him when he does the same horrific shit that he's been doing for the last 30 years. Now Sanders came back and said we can get him on the emoluments clause, which, yeah, we should have. We should have fucking gotten him on the emoluments clause. You can totally fucking do that. You wasted three years on a conspiracy theory because the Democrats couldn't fucking take responsibility For the fact that they ran the worst fucking candidate and rigged the primary against the real candidate that the American people wanted. And they blamed everybody else. And they're still fucking doing it. As you saw earlier when they went after Tulsi Gabbard. For calling out the Democratic Party. And saying that they're corrupt. And saying that they're uh, corporate cronies and war criminals. They can't accept their mistakes, and this is all proof. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, This is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current sociopolitical environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, You can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. uh, Share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, And another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content that was discussed and the and the type of humor that you saw in this video, then you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I've got live shows coming up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 
Columbia, South Carolina, New York City, Philadelphia. I'm going to be on tour uh, in, in a whole bunch of places uh, at the end of 2019 and into 2020. Go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, for my entire tour schedule. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Check out my entire tour schedule. Get your tickets there, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Thanks again.